Welcome everybody, this is Edgardo Valentine. And this is Scott Gregorio, and welcome to the Real Estate of Tomorrow podcast, where we're gonna discuss the rapidly changing landscape of the real estate industry. And the steps that you need to take today in order to survive tomorrow. Look, I'm gonna give you the perspective of a 25 year veteran, somebody who has been there and done that. Which is a slime for all part, okay? <laughs> Screw you, man. <laughs> Look, I'm gonna give you a fresh perspective from somebody that's applying those steps today. So that basically means you're young and you don't know shit. All right, all right. Let's get this started. Welcome to the Real Estate of Tomorrow podcast. This is Edgar the Valentine, and I am with my senior co-host, <laughs> Scott DiGregorio. What's going on? What's going on, man? Bro, look, man, our agents are freaking struggling. Everybody's okay, struggling. Buyers, buyers are struggling. Loan officers are struggling. Everybody's struggling. Look, buyers are scared. Sellers are scared. The media is fueling the, fan, the, 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 the flames. And uh, I really feel like this is the episode that's going to help people move the needle more in their business than anything else I could think of right now. All right. Tell me. Tell me how. All right. Look, I and, and you know, I, I've, I've written an entire class around this, as, as you know, and shameless blog. What's the name of the class? Real estate boom or gloom. Boom. So, look, here's the deal. We live in a freakishly untrusting society. Okay, and you know when I'm teaching boom or gloom, I always like giving the example of um, Dasani water, right? Like we don't believe what salespeople say, and we don't believe the advertisements we we uh, we read. Dasani water has three ingredients in it: water, salt, and some long long ass chemical. Okay, salt makes you thirsty. The long ass chemical I googled that it's a drying agent. So Dasani water is literally water, something to make you thirsty, and something to dry out your mouth. So uh, what's interesting about the human psyche is that we judge other people on their actions, but ourselves on our intentions. So you run into somebody at the grocery store and you're wearing, you're wearing your name tag and they go and you strike up a conversation like, oh, you're in real estate. How's the market? And you go, the market's great. Here's what you have to ask yourself, regardless of your intention to answer that question. Honestly, the question you have to ask yourself is, is it likely the other person is taking you at face value or is the other person thinking to themselves, no crap, you say the market's good, you're a real estate agent, what else are you going to tell me? So this is the problem that we're facing. And Ed, I mean, talk about all the crap that you're, I mean, you, you deal with social media more than me, but talk about all the negative crap you see all over the place. Well, it's everywhere, right? It's everywhere because we are more attracted to problems and we're more attracted to just this crazy titles than just reality so what you see in the media and in social media and just by reading headlines is even things that might be accurate and positive in their body if you just read the headline and you just read the title is very sensationalized and is very um, clickbaity. It, it, it's clickbaity. It's the world is going to end and these are the three things or the three reasons why. That's a lot more interesting than an article on climate change. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a, a video I reference in my class where uh, the title of the YouTube video, video is It's Over, The Housing Bubble Just Popped. And uh, the, mid, the video is whatever, 13 minutes and 40 seconds long. And in the last like 13 or 17 seconds of the video, he literally says, now, if you're waiting for home prices to go back to pre-pandemic levels, good luck, because you're literally fighting against 140 years of economic data. But the title was, it's over, the housing bubble just popped. So, uh, you know, the question we have to ask ourselves is how many of our clients aren't getting to the last 17 seconds. Hell, how many of our clients aren't getting past the headline? The majority of yeah, them. Yeah, and if you click on that headline like I did, that's all you see after that. So, so look, we need a solution, right? I, th I think we've well, laid out well, the problem. Well, the problem is we're living in a world where all we see is this sensationalized, these crazy headlines. And unfortunately, if somebody's looking into real estate, that's all they're looking. And the biggest thing is, you know, and, and we do it in our pre-purchase consultation, you, you are getting the same type of content from traditional media than from new media, whether it's a YouTube video and the title is that, or whether it's an article from the New York Times where the title is the same. Sure. But you're, no matter where you're getting your source, like where your source is, you're getting the same type of clickbaity thing. Okay, so look, let's talk about solutions. 
So what is the solution that I have built Real Estate Boomer Gloom about? And it is this. And I don't know if I coined this phrase. I think I did. But um, it's to develop a data-driven sales approach. Okay. And what I mean by that is it is no longer enough to tell people what's up. We now need to show and tell. We need to use data to prove our point to them, okay? Um, you know, here in Southwest Florida, obviously we got hit by the hurricane. One of the things I did right after that hurricane, and I did this initially to calm down the concerns of my staff, was I found, um, I found something online where they looked at the home appreciation rates one year before and one year after a major hurricane. And it was all in a pretty little graph and a pretty little chart. And uh, what it showed was, in this part, I, I did the math myself, but what it showed is that home appreciation rates one year after a storm actually go up by 74%. So the question you have to ask yourself is this. If somebody comes up to you after, the, after a hurricane, if you happen to be in Southwest Florida, and they ask you, hey, or they tell you rather, listen, I'm going to put my home buying plans on hold because I'm not sure what's going to happen to the housing market after the hurricane, so I'm just going to chill. And you go, no, 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 everything's going to be fine. We should keep looking. Don't you sound like a salesperson? Like really sound like a salesperson? Versus they come up to me and let's say I was an agent and have the same thing. And I go, you know what, John, it's really interesting you say that. I want you to know I had the same concern after the storm happened. And I actually spent quite a bit of time and I put together this information that I want to show, show you real quick. I'm not here to sway you. I'm just here to show you. And here in this chart, as you can see, okay, I emailed it to you or whatever. Here in this chart, as you can see, home appreciation rate goes up by 74%. So if you want to wait, that's fine. But based on this data, you're probably going to pay more for the house if you, if you end up doing so. And by the way, that's what I was talking about three weeks after the storm hit. And here we are many months after the storm hit, and it's proven to be correct. Correct. And and I think one of the things that, that you're doing there and that we do in our pre-purchasing consultation is not just go straight to that, well, the stat says that you're wrong. Acknowledge the logic that comes behind making the assumption that after a hurricane, there's going to be a real estate debacle, Especially right? Especially a nasty-ass Cat 5. But on everything, Yeah. Though, I mean, sure. I understand that because rates are high, you think the market is going to crash. I understand that because um, foreclosures are at the highest they've been in the past 12 months, you think that, or, you know, you think that the housing market is going to crash because I thought the same thing. However, these are the stats. I think it's important to acknowledge it because, look, buying a house, I don't care. And I was talking to a client about this. I don't care if it's your first home, if it's your 10th home, if it's whatever. Buying a house, every time you buy a house, is nerve wracking. Yes. I work with investors that buy a house every single month. And some investors are more nervous than others, some aren't. But it's nerve wracking because the one thing with the real estate market is, is ever changing. And whether it is your first second home, your first vacation home, your first investment property, the first time that you buy a home for your parents to live in, it's always a different circumstance. So look, it's important to let people don't not make people feel stupid for what they're saying, sure. but then show them the reasoning. And and the foreclosure thing is one example that I use all the time, which is, yeah, foreclosures have probably tripled in the past twelve months. Guess what? Twelve months ago, it was illegal to foreclose on somebody. We're still at lower levels than pre-pandemic. It's just after the pandemic, it was illegal to foreclose on somebody's home. Yeah, mortgage forbearance yeah. for all. So, yeah, you see the headline saying foreclosures are at the highest mean in 12 months because 12 months ago it was illegal. But then before the pandemic, we're still it was still higher than it is today. So putting things you know, into perspective is our job. And the only way to do it is by showing people the reality, a sober reality. Look, and that's another another major takeaway from the class is this, okay? Real statistics, not real estate statistics, statistics can be interpreted to tell whatever narrative you want, okay? Right. We could go from two weeks of inventory to six weeks of inventory. And you could honestly, accurately say, oh my goodness, inventory has tripled. Right. That's an accurate statement. You can also say we're sitting at six weeks worth of inventory, which is 
very much a seller's market and people are getting damn near a full, you know, 100% asking of, of list price when they go on the contract. So, so often we need to, in order to combat all of these headlines and data points, we need to know what the data points are and understand how to interpret them, not spin them, just interpret them for what they are and provide a counter narrative to allow the consumer to uh, kind of form their own opinion on it. But we need to go well beyond just, you know, no, 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 you should do it, you know, and, and, and not have a why with a, a data driven thing behind it. So here's the big takeaway. I want you to ask yourself and write down what are the top three or five objections that you're facing? And uh, assuming there's, you know, you, you believe that there's no validity behind it or it's overcomable or what have you for, you know, the majority, not for all, of course. What spend some time online and try to find some data, some charts, some whatever. Redfin, uh, which none of us love, is a wonderful source of, of data. NAR has an amazing amount of data. Um, there's so much good data out there. I'll, I'll go a step further. Think about the objections that you're getting and then go online and see what kind of information you're getting. Because you are quickly realize why well, people... Google those questions. Yeah, why people are coming to you with those objections. There's something that it, it, it always... It, this happens to me twice a year, but... I'm not proud of saying that it happens to me, but it, it keeps happening to me twice a year. Um, twice a year, I get on the phone with a client or with somebody that's not in the business. And my wife listens to me talk to the client. And when I hang up, I go, that was annoying that they were asking this. And my wife always looks at me and goes, hey, Ed, uh, that was us asking the same questions and having the same concerns when we bought our first house. So a little bit of perspective for us is important too. And Googling and getting online and going on YouTube about why people are asking the questions they're asking will give you a wealth of like knowledge on what type of things they're consuming and why they're thinking the way they're thinking. And then it also empowers you to go, hey, I understand that this is what you're looking at but this is the reality of the situation. Heck, we do it with loans, right? Sure. I mean, people come to us still in this market and go, oh, I heard that rates are 4% on TikTok. And we go, yeah, these are the videos on TikTok, but this is the fine print, or this is what Rocket Mortgage is telling you, but they're not telling you that they're charging you five points to get the rate and so on and so on and so on. So look, I'm a big believer on this saying that people look for houses Visually, they fall in love with houses emotionally, but the decision to buy a house is ultimately a financial decision. And I know that there's realtors listening to this and you might be thinking, well, I'm not a lender. I don't need to talk about the numbers. Look, you need to make sure that people understand that financially, this is the right call for them and that buying a house makes sense. And this is a business that we're blessed that the numbers are in our favor. And very few real estate agents and honestly, very few lenders take advantage of this to show it to the clients. But financially, the numbers are in our favor and we should be boasting that we should be that should be the flag that we show everybody is, hey, financially and historically and no matter how you caught it, the numbers tell you that buying a house makes sense for you and for most Americans. And this is why you should buy yet. Most agents are spending their time talking about why the kitchen is beautiful. And most lenders are spending their time talking about how I can save you a little bit on rate, as opposed to this is how we can financially impact your life by buying real estate. Hey, look, quick pro tip. If you Google something, when you're done Googling it, you have the little questions that are underneath it, like other related searches. Those are the most common searches. That's like a little like like a search engine kind of optimization thing. If you click on any one of those suggested topics, the list of suggested topics will keep growing. What that'll do is that will give you insight as to what people are searching. And then every one of those that you click on and expand will give you the number one answer that people are getting. So you could spend 20, 30 minutes online and very quickly get your arms wrapped around the types of fears people have and the types of information they're getting to address those fears. Um, one thing to add to, to just close this is don't assume 
that the people that are in voicing those fears don't have them. We we changed the way that we did our business and we created a presentation that is based on that boom and gloom class that help every single client that goes through or wants to go through a purchase transaction or a refinance transaction where we talk about the market we talk about where things are going we talked about where we expect the real estate market and rate market and all these things to go and nine out of ten times walking into the meeting people tell me yeah no i've done my research and i feel very confident one time one out of ten times they tell me that they're actually afraid but the majority of people even the people that tell me no i'm very confident i know that i want to do this as i'm going through the presentation they start going you know what i was afraid of this it's funny you say this because my father-in-law told me this and i was very nervous about this or and and once you do um once you look back at the numbers of how many people you went through the motion of explaining to them why financially it makes sense and how many people you didn't you are just by going through the presentations you are creating more assured buyers buyers that are more ready to get into this market buyers that are more convinced about the numbers and buyers that ultimately are better prepared to tackle this market which is not a difficult market and look and, which is and, not an easy market sorry and and here's another piece of it maybe they don't have concerns on day one i had a i had a, a client where he strenuously ensured me that he had no concerns he didn't have time to sit through the whole thing like that, that doesn't happen often but it happens right and and i said look man if at any point the slightest trepidation trepidation enters your mind i want you to call me so we can go through this Fast forward, we're about a week away from closing, and he called me up and he said, you know what, Scott, I woke up this morning deciding that I was going to cancel the deal, but I remembered something you said to me, and I wanted to kind of schedule this time. And I'm like, cancel the deal? What's going on? He goes, my dad really got inside my head that if I cancel this deal and wait six months, I'll probably save fifty dollars or $100,000 on the price of the house. He goes, and I just, I couldn't stop thinking about you saying that if I had any concerns to call you. So before I canceled the contract, I wanted to call you. And I said, look, two things. Number one, thank you for calling me. Number two, let's get dad on this call. And uh, when I was done with everything, I was able to keep that contract together um, and get kind of dad educated on things. So uh, even if they genuinely don't have concerns on day one, does not mean that they will not have concerns down the road. So you should have this conversation with everybody. And again, the numbers are in our favor. We're not selling snake oil here. I mean, we're selling something that's proven to work. So take advantage of that. Don't shy away from that conversation get yourself educated on the conversation and get surrounded by people that are educated with uh, about this conversation and this is the only way to prepare our clients to get into what's a difficult market rates suck right now it's expensive to buy a house yet it's still the right decision for most people absolutely for, for, yeah, for the overwhelming of majority of people yeah. absolutely so look spend some time like you know um great book i've mentioned this in other episodes the e-myth revisited he talks a lot about the difference between working in your business and on your business and if you're giving the same presentation to clients whether it's like a powerpoint slide deck or just whatever if you're a dealing no, with clients no, no, fuck that not whatever make it a powerpoint it de- presentation. well it needs to be something created yeah. so they can see it but if you're interacting with clients the same way today as you were 24 months ago you are making a huge miss and you need to take some time to work on your business spend some time finding out what you know writing down what are the objections you're dealing with what type of stuff is being is being searched for on google what type of information is out there on social media and then equip yourselves with the information the graphs the charts the slide decks etc and the knowledge to intelligently answer those questions. And you know what I would love everybody to do is leave a comment with the number one objection they're facing right now. And uh, we'll see how many of them, I would argue most, we have answers for, and we'll be able to go ahead and provide that information to everybody to get them started. If you want the slide deck of um, our pre-purchase consultation, send us an email, we'll send it to you. 
All right, everybody, that is what we got for you today, man. Look, I really hope with all my heart that everybody takes this information to heart and implements it into their, into their real estate practice because it will make an unequivocal difference and it will make a difference very, very quickly. We have agents routinely that send us deals that are not going anywhere because they're afraid of the market, they're afraid of this, that, and the other. They send them over to us and when we're done with them and we're done educating them on what's going on, they're not only back in the market, but they're aggressively back in the market. So, uh, and these are people whose lives we could really impact. Well, one quick story to close. I met with a client who didn't qualify now. Um, and he told me he was qualified a couple of years ago, but didn't buy because he followed Dave Ramsey and said, you know, if I can't put down 20%, I shouldn't buy a house. And, uh, when I explained to him the situation he was in, what he said to me, and I'll never forget this, he said, I wish the people I was working with three years ago had pushed me harder to stop me from being in this position. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our job to be the professionals and help guide people to where they need to be as opposed to just being order takers for those that want to, to do it. I'm not saying to do it deceptively. I'm telling you to do it from with a pure heart, but that will absolutely be the best way you could help lots of people in this market well and and i'll tell you what the um if you feel when when scott is saying to do it deceptively if you feel that that lands that that that's you or that's a 10 10 one percent of how you feel when you talk clients into buying a house right now i would invite you to do your research because what I think a lot of people in the real estate and mortgage community are, are living through is that they have lost their conviction on their product. And when you lose your conviction on their real product, when you stop believing that what your product is actually good, that, the, that your product is actually good, that comes through in conversations. It's a difference between somebody asking you, how's the market and you going, it's shitty or it's full of opportunities. And if you really feel like it's shitty and that's the message that you're sending, whether you're sending it with your words or you're just sending it because that's how you believe or you believe that there's plenty of opportunities, it, it's going to come across. It seeps through so, in every communication. So I, I invite you to first and foremost, go through the data yourself and convince yourself because if you can't convince yourself, you're not going to convince anybody because we're at, at the end of the day, we're all good people here and we're trying to do what's best for your clients. So believe that this is what's best for your clients, but believe it in yourself first. Listen, it's great advice, man. Listen, uh, guys, if you got a lot of value out of this, I'm going to ask you for a favor. Go ahead and leave us a five star review. Uh, go ahead and like this episode and share it with somebody because we're really trying to get the word out and make a difference in the real estate community during this uh, during this wild ride that we're on. So, everybody, this is uh, Scott DiGregorio along with Edgardo Ballantyne. This is the Real Estate of Tomorrow podcast, the best freaking podcast out there, and one where we always want to ask you a question. Are you doing what you need to do today to be relevant in the real estate market of tomorrow? Everybody, we'll see you in two weeks. Thanks for listening. Well, thank you guys for listening. And now it's your turn to implement everything you learned today. Look, you have a question. You have a topic for a future episode. Share with us. Yeah, tell us what you're doing. What are you doing today so you could be successful tomorrow? Send us an email at success at realestateoftomorrow.com. And don't forget to leave us a review, an honest review. Screw an honest review. Leave us a five-star review. And for every five-star review we get, we're going to send you a badass real estate mean t-shirt. <laughs> Those shirts are hilarious. See ya.